tutorial is brought to you by PostBargain.com. 3D props at bargain prices. In this video, I'm going to show you a few poly painting tips and tricks for ZBrush 3. If you are just beginning to use ZBrush 3, you will find poly painting a unique and fun process. But before the tips, let's just get an overview of the settings you need for poly painting. When you first start poly painting, make sure that you have done the following things. In the texture menu, make sure that colorize is on. If you are just coloring your model and not sculpting, then make sure that RGB is on, MRGB is off, and Z add Z sub is off. Because you will be painting directly onto the polygons of your model, you will need to make sure that your model is subdivided enough. It is best that you go to your highest subdivision level for this, as you will want to get the most detail possible. Select a simple shader, like the basic shader, then select a simple base color and go to Color, Fill Object to fill your object with that base color. This will give you your blank model canvas to paint on. When poly painting, unless you use Projection Master, you won't be able to use the 2D painting tools. You are limited to the 3D sculpting tools. This may be a bit frustrating for some people, especially if you have a favorite 2D tool you usually work with. But some of the 2D tools have 3D equivalents. For example, the standard brush works like the simple brush. The layer brush works like the single layer brush, allowing you to paint an even layer of color as long as you hold down the mouse button. Other useful brushes are the stitch and tracks brushes which work like the roller brush. Using either the stitch or tracks brushes allow you to roll a texture along a path as you drag your mouse along the model just like you would with the roller brush in 2D. However, there are a few things you need to note. When you use an alpha while using the stitch or tracks brushes, remember that the image and alpha tile repeatedly along your stroke. So, if you have an alpha where the sides are transparent, there will be transparency along the tiling. Also, when you move the brush along a curve, you may get some overlapping smoothing between the seams of your image. In this case, it is best if you don't use this tool for precise tiling along your path. If you use an image while using the stitch or tracks brushes, you will need to disable your UVs. This can be a problem if you have UVs already assigned because once you click Disable UVs, all your UV information gets lost. The best thing to do here is to export out a copy of your object at the lowest subdivision level before disabling UVs under a different name. Then, re-importing your lowest resolution UV model once your poly painting is done. There are other ways you can approach this, but I won't go into it because the focus of this tutorial is on poly painting. If you have any problems with UVs and poly painting, please do a search on the ZBrush Central forum at www.pixelator.com for possible solutions. Using this smoothing tool while poly painting is the same as smoothing when sculpting, except that you blend colors instead of geometry deformation. However, the strength at which you smooth objects depends on the RGB value and not the strength value of your brush. For example, here is a subdivided sphere with two differently painted sides. If you use the smooth tool with 100% RGB value, I get this. With the same sphere, here is the result of the smoothing with a lower RGB value. Did you know that you can use the mask tool when poly painting? Masking while poly painting will give you more control over what gets painted or not. This is especially good if you are painting tricky areas of your model. And if you have polygroups assigned to your model, it is even easier because you can hide parts of your model, paint your mask, then unhide everything to give you more control of your masking. Like with the smooth tool, 
the masking tool while poly painting uses the RGB value slider to set its strength. This means that adjusting the RGB slider allows you to mask from 1% to 100%. Also, when you use the masking tool with the layer tool active, you will get an even layer of masking. This is good if you are masking at less than 100%. Oh, and make sure that when you mask, you mask at the opposite value at which you want to paint. For example, if you only want to paint an area at about 30%, set your RGB value to 70% when masking. When you are finished poly painting, you will probably want to turn your painting into a texture image to use in another program. Making sure your model has UVs assigned and a plain texture has been set, press the Call Text button to transfer your poly painting to your texture. Now you may notice that your poly painting has not been transferred at full transparency. If you want your poly painting to be transferred at 100%, you need to set the RGB value of your current tool to 100%. Sometimes texturing can be difficult, especially if you're trying to wrap something around the model part, like a snake tattoo around a person's arm, for example. But with the wonderful tools in ZBrush 3, there are ways of making this easier. As you can see, I've imported an arm object that I created in Lightwave. I've subdivided it and filled it with a plain white color. This is a simple coil shape that I've made to wrap around the arm. It's UV mapped as well and has a poorly drawn snake tattoo image applied to it. I import the coil shape into ZBrush and subdivided it a number of times. I also took the texture image and converted it to painted polygons using the text to call button. I selected the arm, then appended the coil shape as a sub tool. Turning off Z add, I was able to use the Z project brush to transfer the polygon coloring from the coil object onto my arm object. After that, it was all a matter of transferring the poly painting from the arm onto a texture image. I could now take the black and white image and use it as a mask in Photoshop to add proper color to the normal skin texture for the arm. This tip works just like the previous tip, except that it uses pre-prepared cut geometry instead. Here is a simple sphere. In Lightwave, I subdivided this sphere and created a star shape using the drill tool. Both objects were imported into ZBrush and filled with base colors, the sphere with white and the star with black. After subdividing the sphere a number of times, I used the Z project brush just like I did with the last tip so that I was able to transfer the color of the star to the color of the sphere. Now I realize that this may not be one of the most groundbreaking of tricks, but at least you know one of the alternative options you have when poly painting. Well, I hope you have found these tips useful and I wish you the best of luck in your ZBrush project.